everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am super excited to share with all of you a large haul of eight new brushes from Refer. So I am especially excited about this video because this is my first time ever receiving brushes from Refer. So for context, a while back I uploaded a video reviewing all of my Refer brushes. In that video, I had 19 brushes from Refer, so almost all of their line. And if you guys watched that video, it's kind of a mixed review, I would say. So I mean, I'm overall positive about the brand and I do have most of their brushes, but I also definitely pointed out a lot of downsides with the brand as well. And so I really never expected the brand to reach out. And so when they did and asked, and specifically their co-founder, Tom, reached out, I was incredibly surprised and blown away. So for context, I have almost never received anything from brands. I have received a few products from Merit Beauty, and that's it. And so everything else I showcase on my channel are products that I've just bought with my own money. And because I don't actually make money on net from this YouTube channel, my reviews do tend to be a bit on the harsh side because, you know, it's my hard earned cash that I'm paying for these products. And so I want to make sure that I tell you guys as much about the negative side as about the positive side. But because that review was so mixed, I was really impressed how gracious and kind Tom was. So basically he said he really appreciated my feedback about the brushes and appreciated how honest I was about them and wanted to check if they could send me more brushes. And so I jumped on that opportunity because I have spent a lot of money on refer brushes in the past and there were still a decent number of brushes I hadn't tried. And so with this haul, I have almost all of their brushes, which is really exciting to me. And so in today's video, I'm going to show you guys my first impressions and demos of all these brushes. And so if you guys are interested in learning more about refer brushes, just stick around. So before we get started, I did want to mention that this is a really interesting brush haul in that because these are brushes that I did not actually buy previously myself, there is a reason why I didn't previously buy these. So these brushes kind of fall into one of three categories. There's these large brushes over here, which I never purchased from Refer previously just because they're quite pricey. And for me, at least historically, if I was going to pay around $100 for a brush, I would generally go for a Sonia G brush or a Chikahoto brush. So I'm super curious to try out these refer face brushes to see if they are worth the cost. And then there's some smaller eye brushes like the 12 and the 34, which I never picked up just because these are not really shapes that I normally use in my makeup routine. So it's going to be really interesting testing these out today. I'm going to kind of adjust my makeup routine a little bit so we can give these guys a fair shot. And then finally, there's some brushes like this 33 and 36 that are just on the newer side. And so I just haven't gotten around to picking them up yet. And so I'm super excited to try all of these out. There were a few more brushes that I mentioned being interested in that I guess were sold out at the time. So the brand did not send them to me. So I'll put those numbers on the screen in case you guys are interested. But other than those brushes, I now have a complete set of refer brushes. I also have their makeup organizers, their lash curler and their brush soap. And I talk about those products as well in my previous video. So definitely watch that video as well if you haven't already ready. So without further ado, let's get into these brushes. So I'm going to do this in order by number. So this is the refer number 12 brush. It's a round pencil brush. Next we have the refer number 22. This is their flagship bronzer brush. I am super excited about this one. It's a really fluffy paddle like brush. I think this will be great as well for all over face powder. Then we have the refer number 24. This is a blush brush but it's quite dense. So I feel like you could also probably use this for buffing contour into your face as well. Then we have the refer number 30. This one I'm very excited about as well because it's just so fluffy and it has such long bristles. So I feel like this is gonna be really nice on the face. Then we have the refer number 31. This is their flagship foundation brush. I already have the refer number 17, which is like a smaller version of this. Then we have the refer number 33. This is supposed to be like a hybrid between their refer number one and number two. 
I do have both of those brushes, so I'll show you guys those in the comparisons later on. This brush has a very interesting V at the top, which I think will give it some nice precision. Then we have the refer number 36. This is one of the newer editions, and I am actually super excited about this because as you can see, this has that sort of fingertip like applicator top, and I've recently really been loving brushes that have this sort of shape. So I'm very excited to see how this applies product. I think this will be good both for liquid products like concealer and also for doing eyeshadow as well. Oh, and this is a little out of order, but here's the refer number 34. It is a tiny, tiny little liner brush. This is honestly one which I'm not really sure exactly how I'll end up using. It's just so fine. I think if you do a lot of detail work, this will be excellent, but it's definitely a lot smaller than what I typically go for. So I will be doing a bunch of brush comparisons later, but let's first start by putting some makeup on my face. So for foundation today, I'm going to use a cocktail that I haven't used in a while, which is combining my LYS foundation with my Pat McGrath foundation. I really love this kind of early 2022. I was wearing this combo a lot because as you can see, the Pat McGrath is a little bit deep for me in the winter whereas the LYS is a little bit on the lighter side. And so I really enjoyed putting these two together. And I find the formulas of these two go together quite well. I just kind of blend them together on the back of my hand. But I sort of stopped using this combination after a while because there were so many new foundations that I was trying out. But let's go in with it today. So that's one pump of each. We'll see how that goes. So I'm going to go in now with the 31. And for context, I do not have any primer on. I just have my normal skincare. So we'll get a really good sense of how this brush performs by itself. Oh, it's actually making pretty fast work of this, which is nice. So moving on to concealer. So I honestly think the Refer 33 and the Refer 36 would both be really good for concealer. I feel like the shape would be really nice. But I do want to try these with eyeshadow today, so maybe actually, hmm. Okay, let me do some brush comparisons for you guys right now, but I might actually add concealer later on after I do my eyes, just so we can first use these as eye brushes. Okay, yes, that's what I'm going to do. So let me first just show you guys some comparisons. So this is my current favorite concealer brush. This is from BK Beauty. It's the Angie Hot and Flashy. 506 brush and you can see that these are very similar in size and somewhat similar in shape this is the refer number 33 brush and one thing i really like about this bk beauty brush is that sort of point at the top which this brush has an even more pronounced point so i feel like that'll be really good for really getting into that lower lash line area especially towards the center like i could imagine this being very nice for eye primer as well and then holding it next to the 36 brush. So the 36 brush is a little shorter, but both of them have that sort of fingertip shape to them. And so that's why I initially thought about these for concealer, but I think they are designed to be eye brushes. I also like this refer number 32 brush for concealer. It's more of a hoof shape. This one though can leave some streaks, so I don't use it as much as the BK Beauty, but I am very intrigued about these two for that purpose. So since we're skipping ahead to eyeshadow, I went off camera to do my brows and my eye primer. As always, the products will be linked in my description box below. And now I'm going to go in with eyeshadow and I'm going to do a technique that I don't normally do, which is first going in with eyeliner and smudging it out and then applying more eyeshadow on top. And the reason I'm doing that is because I really want to try out this refer number 12 brush as a smudger because historically I haven't really liked <laughs> these kinds of brushes that much. So for context, I have this Sonia G Pencil Pro, which is kind of similar. It's a little bit smaller and denser, but I basically never use <laughs> this brush. And so I really want to give this brush as much chance as possible. And I think this is the main thing it's supposed to be used for. So I have here my Pat McGrath Permagel Liner in the shade Black Coffee, and I'm going to start by just kind of putting this along my lash line. 
I have not used this technique in a very long time, so we're going to see how this goes. And then I'm going to go in with that reference number 12 and start sort of smudging it out. Hopefully this actually smudges. Okay, yeah, I feel like it's starting to smoke out, so let's see how this goes. All right, so I'm getting some smokiness for sure. This is a very soft brush, I'll definitely give it that. I feel like I'm applying a decent amount of pressure because I really want this permagel liner to smudge, but it's not actually scratching my eyelid at all, which is great. All right, so yeah, I think I could definitely continue smudging this out and get it a little bit more diffused, but I don't really want to keep moving my eyelid around, so maybe we'll just kind of leave it there. But if you are someone who likes smudging your liner out, I think this does a pretty good job. Let me actually see with whatever product is still on the brush if I can. Okay, yeah, there's not enough product there, so let's go on this side with some of this liner. If you guys see the Pat McGrath videos on her Instagram where she's doing looks, she often does this where she'll just kind of draw some of black coffee on and then use a smudger brush to smudge it out and she sometimes uses this in lieu of a darker matte shade so at least theoretically <laughs> this should work but yeah i'm definitely not a huge fan of this technique maybe maybe actually i should have tried this without the primer underneath because do you feel like the primer is also helping the eyeliner to just sort of adhere rather than easily smudge I mean, it's definitely working once I put a little bit of elbow grease in, but can't say I'm a huge fan of this kind of style. I think it's a lot easier for me just to go in with some shadow. But I think you can also use this kind of liner as a base almost, like you can sort of draw some of that on and then smudge it out. And then in theory, I think your eyeliners, your eyeshadows should apply more easily on top. But you definitely need to put some effort into blending this out. Alrighty, so I think I'm going to kind of leave that there because we are going to go into eyeshadow as well. I'm going to also try using this brush on my lower lash line later on. But... If you are in the market for this kind of smudger brush, I think this is very soft, so that's great. Do I like this technique? No, I don't. So <laughs> we'll see if I can use this brush for some other purpose as well. Maybe I can use this more to kind of buff out edges or something. TBD. So for the shadow, I'm going to go in with my Pat McGrath Decadence palette. I am a little bit ashamed to admit this, but I actually have not used this particular palette. So for context, I originally ordered this palette and when I got it, I noticed that there were these bubbles in this lapis luxury shade over here. You can also see that this one has bubbles as well. So that kind of freaked me out. So I contacted the brand, asked if I could return it and get another one. And they agreed with the caveat that they said a lot of them do have this sort of bubble situation <laughs> happening. And so I ordered another one and lo and behold, it also has bubbles. And so I've kept this, but I just haven't used it yet on camera, but we will change that today. So let's see, I'm gonna first go in with the 33 brush and hmm, I guess I'll just go into this shade over here. This seems like the most easy going shade. And let's just sweep that. And the reason I took this palette out is because I feel like both of these refer brushes are designed to be used in one and done looks. And I don't normally do one and dones, but I feel like Decadence is quite perfect for one and done looks. Oh, wow. Okay, that was actually really, really nice and really easy. Okay, huh. Alrighty, so yeah, if you are into one and done looks, I think this refer number 33 and also these metallics and Decadence are really, really perfect for that. That was super, super easy to apply and blend out. Huh, okay. I'm 
quite impressed. So in theory, this reference number 33 brush should be kind of like a hybrid between the one and two. So I have the one in the middle and the two on the side. You can see the 33 is actually much bigger, wider, and a slightly different shape. It's kind of like a much bigger version of the one, but with a little bit more of the skinniness of the two. So in that sense, I can see why it's considered a hybrid, but it's also just a very distinct brush in and of itself. So that was actually really impressive. I really like how even though it's a very big brush, because it has this little corner to it, I feel like it can really get in there quite nicely. Wow, huh. And I do actually like how this part where I deepened up with black coffee, the black coffee still peeks through a bit. Maybe I actually should have added some more of that liner. And let me just actually also change the color balance a little bit. I feel like I was looking very ghastly. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in with just a little bit more on this side of black coffee. And then hopefully this refer number 12 can kind of blend that out a little bit. I am just discovering all sorts of new things in today's look. It's very interesting because, you know, you get into a certain habit of how you do makeup and especially for me since I have this review channel, I usually only try to change one thing in each video. So, so I try to avoid using a bunch of new products or techniques when I'm trying out new brushes. But today is kind of interesting because I am <laughs> having to adapt my technique so I didn't realize that my camera ran out of space, so I kept on going with smudging out this liner. For context, I added a little bit more of black coffee and then went back in with the reference number 12 to keep smudging, but that brings us up to now. So on this eye, I'm gonna go in with the reference number 36 and I'm gonna go back into that same shade and let's see how this applies. Ooh, okay, this definitely I think packed on a little bit more shadow in comparison to the 33, but it is very soft and I think it's doing a good job of blending out that crease area as well. Oh, okay, that was actually super easy too. Can you guys see any difference between the two? I feel like on this side, the brush applied more kind of thin layers, whereas on this side, it definitely picked up a decent amount of product to start with, but I think it's still, did a pretty good job of blending that out. Wow, that was really easy. I have to hand it to this brush. Actually, both of these brushes, they do the one and done look really well. And I do like, again, how black coffee sort of peeks through. So this is interesting. This is actually a technique I've never done before. I've only seen Pat McGrath do it in terms of using her liner underneath, smudging it out, instead of going in with a darker matte shade. And I'm actually digging it. I mean, I still kind of want a little bit more dimension just to test out these brushes a little bit more. But if you are into one and dones, I mean, both of these brushes, especially with this palette, did a really good job. But since I don't want to stop there, I am gonna go in with this deeper shade over here. And this is a really big brush, so I'm kind of curious if I am actually able to use it to deepen out the outer portion. Huh. Okay, actually that's not too bad. I mean, it is a little chunky, so if you're doing a really intricate look I don't know that this is the best, but let's just play around today. Hmm. All right, so I think that did a decent job of adding a little bit of depth in the outer corner and a little bit into the crease area. On the other side, I'm gonna go back in with the 33 and kind of do the same thing. I'm gonna take a little bit of this and then just see how it looks applied with this brush. Ooh, oh, actually that, that applied more than I thought. And it kind of, because of the shape of this brush, it sort of left more of an angle, almost kind of a wing. Interesting. Let's try to blend that into the crease as well. Alrighty, actually I do not dislike that, which is kind of surprising. I really wasn't expecting to be able to deepen up the look with such big fluffy brushes, but I think it looks decent. So on the whole, I will say, I think that if you want to use multiple shades on your eyes, then you probably do want to go in with a slightly smaller brush than either of these. 
But that said, if you want to do a one and done, I do feel like these are very excellent. I mean, the blend is really impressive. To be fair, these are Pat McGrath shadows and I expect them to perform impeccably, but I am very impressed with these brushes as well. There was really no effort and I feel like I managed to get a pretty nice shape as well. Like there's not that much cleanup to do in terms of the edges. So now let's see for the lower lash line. So I'm gonna go back in with black coffee and I'm gonna kind of run this along my lower lash line. And then I'm gonna go back with the refer number 22 and just kind of use this to smudge out that lower lash line area. Okay, that actually doesn't look bad. Try that again on this side. This is also a technique I don't typically use. I usually just go in directly with shadow and then only put liner in my waterline area. But let's see if the smudger can sort of smoke things out a bit. All right, so yeah, that looks decent. Again, not my favorite technique ever, but if you like this sort of technique, I think this brush does a good job. And then I feel like the 36 is gonna be too thick to do anything in the lower lash line, so I'm gonna go in with the 33 and just back into first this shade over here. And this might also be a little chunky, but let's just see if we can gingerly run that along the lower lash line. Okay, I think that did a decent job. It is very fluffy, so it's very soft, which is nice on the lower lash line, but Definitely if you want a more precise application, you might want to use a thinner brush. I do like using the refer number two brush in the lower lash line area. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of this deeper shade on kind of the tip of this brush just to see if I can put a little bit of that in the outer corners. Okay, I think that worked pretty well. And actually I am very impressed with just how soft this brush is. It was really comfortable on the lids even though it's quite a large brush. So I went off camera to do some eyeliner and now let's go in with concealer. So I have here my trusty Pat McGrath concealer. I'm going to put this in my under eye area and then also wherever I have some blemishes and around my nose and mouth. So I did my best to clean off both of these eye brushes. I think there's still a little bit of eyeshadow left, but let's hope that it still works out. So let's see, I guess on the side of my face, I'm gonna go in with the 36 and just dab it in. Okay, I think that's going pretty well. Again, this has sort of like a finger-like feeling to it, and so that's why I thought it might be good for this kind of concealer application. And so far, I am enjoying it. I feel like it's, it's very good for this sort of padding motion. Now, the real question is if I'm gonna be able to get close enough to my eye area not to disturb the eyeshadow too much. So I'm gonna be very careful, especially this part over here. Normally, I would go in with eyeshadow after concealer, so this would be less of a problem, but of course today, because I wanted to use the brushes for both of these cases, I didn't want it to already be sort of gunked up. I feel like this is doing a pretty good job. I think I especially like it actually to pad down areas around my face. Around the eyes, though, it also does a good job. What I like about using concealer brushes is because the brush absorbs the excess product, it leaves a really nice sheer layer of concealer on the face. All right, so now I'm just gonna clean off that brush again, and I'm gonna use the side that hopefully has not touched eyeshadow yet, and pat the concealer over here. All right, definitely I would say already, I think I like the 36 a little bit better for concealer just because this one is a lot softer and fluffier, so it doesn't have as much force when it's patting in the product. But this is still doing a good job. Let's see if, I do like though how the shape of this is making it a little bit easier to be quite precise in the under eye area. Yeah, compared to the other one though, I feel like it's not as good at leaving a streak free finish. Still doing a good job overall, considering this is supposed to be for eyeshadow instead of concealer. But yeah, on the whole, I think this side 
looks a little bit better. All right, so now that I've tried both of these with concealer and eyeshadow, I would say that I think I like this one a little bit better for eyeshadow. It was just so quick and easy to do this eye. And also I was able to have a little bit more definition in terms of that outer corner deeper shade. Whereas I think the 36 was better at the concealer application. I think both of these did pretty well with both use cases, but that would just be my recommendation. If you're looking for more of a concealer brush, maybe go in with the 36. If you're looking for more of an eyeshadow brush, maybe the 33. So moving right along, I still haven't powdered my face, so I brought out two powders, my Kogan Doe powder and my LYS powder. This is a loose powder, this is a pressed powder. So I thought it would be good to try out the reference number 30 with both types of powder. So on the right side of my face, I'm just gonna go in with this LYS powder, take a little bit of it and start stamping it on. I honestly feel like the, the finish of the foundation already looks fine and it doesn't really need powder, but since we are here to test out the brushes, I'm going to put that on. All right, so this is doing very quick work of powdering things down. I think you can see that this side is looking a little bit more matte and perfected in comparison to this side. I will say because you go kind of directly on the face like this, it's not as soft as the other brushes that I was just using. So with these, because you're using them more at an angle, it feels a little softer. I will, I am interested actually in trying this out for bronzer later on as well, because I feel like maybe if you had a little bit more movement with this brush, it would feel a bit softer. But yeah, just going directly down like that with the powder does feel a little bit prickly. And on the other side of my face, I'm going in with my Kogan Doe powder. It's going to sweep that quickly on. I do like how fast this brush is. I think if you use it more in these sorts of sweeping motions, it feels really nice and soft. So that would be my recommendation. I think especially if you have a larger face, this would be really nice. Because with my small face, I think there's a tendency just to sort of go like this instead of a more sweeping motion. But the sweeping motion is where it does feel most soft. So moving on to bronzer, I am very impressed with this bronzer brush and very excited to try it out. Let me first actually give you some comparisons. So here it is next to the Jumbo Bronzer from Sonia G. They're actually very similar sizes and shapes. I would say the refer is just a little bit thinner. Also the refer is maybe a little bit denser in comparison to the Sonia G. And then the Sonia G of course is in dyed goat hair, whereas this is undyed goat hair. And here it is next to my Lunar New Year brush from Beautylish. Again, similar size and shape, but in this case, the refer is definitely a bit bigger and fluffier. And in terms of density, yeah, I would say the Beautylish one is a lot looser, whereas you have a lot more bristles in the refer. Here it is next to the Niji Pro from Sonia G. These are very different shapes and sizes. The Niji is a lot more of a buffing brush. Here it is next to the Face Pro from Sonia G. The refer one is a bit larger and a different shape. So now let's see how it performs on the skin. So I have here my Corselet bronzer from M Cosmetics. I'm gonna just take a little bit and start patting it on. Okay, I think that's doing a decent job. I think I like, I think I like using this a bit at an angle like this. It definitely is a little bit large for my face, so it applies a decent amount of bronzer but I guess it makes very quick work of the forehead area. Let's see the jawline. Okay, yeah, definitely a little bit big for the jawline, but good if you want that kind of very diffuse application. The density does mean you can kind of buff it in a little bit after you have laid down the product, which I like, but I don't really like using it directly like this. I think it's definitely softer if you use it a bit at an angle. That actually did a pretty good job. I don't think I actually need <laughs> more bronzer on top of that. That's looking pretty good. On the other side, let's actually go in with this refer number 30 brush just to see. Oh, and actually this kind of fits perfectly. But, ooh, okay. This feels really soft. So again, if you use that kind of sweeping motion with this brush, I think it feels just a lot softer than if you pat it on like this. 
So this is definitely going to give you a very wispy application of bronzer. So if you want something more targeted, if you want more of a chiseled sculpt, this is not the best brush to use. But if you want to just add a little bit of warmth and dimension to your face, I think this is really great. And let me actually try both of these as well with my Glowish Bronzer from Huda Beauty, just because I want to try multiple formulas. So I think I originally saw Morgan Turner using this bronzer with this brush, and that's actually part of what inspired this. Ooh, that is looking very nice. Okay, I actually do really like this brush for this kind of application. It feels very feather light if you use it like this instead of the way I was using it with the powder. And then on the other side, let's go back in with this Ruffer 22 brush into the Huda just to even things out. And you think you can definitely see this picks up more product. And so it's better, I guess, if you want to use either a hard to pick up product or you want to kind of continue to buff in the product after you apply it. Whereas with the 30 brush, it was just sort of really quick wispy motions. Alrighty, so there we have the two bronzed sides. Do you guys have any preference between the two? I would say that they're very different application styles. I was really impressed with just how this one felt. So at the moment, upon initial impressions, I like this side a little bit better, but this one definitely gives you a little bit more precision and a little bit more power to buff out the product. So now let's go into the Ruffer number 24 brush. This is kind of like a much smaller version of the 22 and a little bit denser as well. This reminded me a lot of the Wayne Goss number 12 brush, which has since been discontinued, but you can see these look, yeah, actually these are like basically dupes. I think the Ruffer one's a little bit bigger, but yeah, they feel quite similar in density. The Ruffer might be slightly denser, but these are very similar. For context, I like to use the Wayne Goss number 12 for bronzer and contour. So actually I should probably try this for contour today as well. But I think this is designated as a blush brush. So I first wanna try it out with blush. So I have here my Chantecaille blush in the shade Anemone. I do have a dedicated video to their Wildflowers release in case you guys are interested. But I'm gonna just start with a little bit of product first. Ooh, actually it's quite a bit, but I do think the density of this brush will let me buff it out. And yes, I am seeing that, so that's good. So I think this is a good brush to use either if you have a pigmented blush like this that you want to buff out, or maybe use it with a really hard to pick up blush because it does pick up a decent amount of product. Like usually with my other brushes, I might dip in twice into this blush, but you can see with just one tap, I was definitely able to get enough pigmentation for my cheeks. But I do like how this buffs things out easily. So I'm not seeing any patchiness, even though it did apply a little bit much at first. So I was intrigued by the prospect of trying out this brush with some contour. So I went off camera to pick up my Tiger palette from Hourglass and in the process decided I might as well put on some lipstick. So here we have close to the final look. I cleaned off as much of that blush as I could get off that rougher brush. And I'm gonna just go into this shade over here and see if I can apply a bit of this in a targeted manner, just to the outer portion of the cheeks. Okay, yeah, I think this is doing it, sort of. Hmm. Okay, actually, it does look a tad bit muddy. Let's see, that's my bad cheek, so let's try it on this side. Hmm. Yeah, same thing on this side. I don't know why it's looking a tad bit patchy. Let me just use this to buff things out a little bit more. Okay, that's better. It could also just be the interaction of the products, but usually the hourglass blends in pretty nicely. Hmm. All right, yeah, I can't say that's looking the best. Let me actually go back in with this fluffy brush and just try to sweep a little bit of that away. <laughs> and maybe actually go back in with the 22 as well, just to zhuzh out those edges. 
All right, so on the whole, I would say, I think for this 24 brush, at least upon initial impressions, I did really like it for that blush application. I think it did a really good job of that. Even though it's very similar to the Wayne Goss number 12 brush, which I think of as a bronzer brush, I don't really like it as much for contour, at least. And I'll have to try it out with a warmer bronzer as well. But at the moment, definitely more of a blush brush for me. So I went off camera to put on a little bit of highlighter. So if you see any gleam on my cheeks, that's what that is. And the final brush to try is this Refer Number 34 brush, as I mentioned at the top. This is not a brush I would typically use because I generally just go in with liner and don't really use a brush like this. But I thought maybe I could try to go in with one of these shades and just add a little bit of something near the lash line. So let's see, how do I want to do this? Maybe I will actually go into some of this Lapis Luxury shade. Let's see if this picks it up. Okay, yeah, I think that picked up a decent amount. And let's just put a little bit of that just along the lash line. It's such a small brush, I feel like it's even thinner than my eyeliner, which is great if you're someone who likes to go in with liner on a brush instead of using a pen, then I think this will give you some nice precision. Oh, can you guys see that? It basically is just like a little hint of blue on top of my brown eyeliner. Let me actually bring you guys in all the way. As a side note, I feel like my face is always looking either completely orange or completely ghastly with my camera settings for some reason. So apologies if it's getting too warm or too cold. But this is really pretty actually. I'm liking this effect. Hopefully you guys can see that. I feel like it's just amping up my liner game, giving it a little bit more interest. And this is definitely a very easy to maneuver brush, so I really like that. Ooh. Okay, so here's the before and after. Just the liner by itself and the liner plus the blue shadow. So zooming you guys out, here we have the final look. What do you think? Overall, I'm very pleased with this. I'm actually quite surprised because I feel like even though I normally like to go in with a lot more complexity in the eyeshadow look, this is looking really nice. And I think it also really matches my dress of the day very nicely as well. So now let's run through my overall impressions of each of the brushes. So starting out with the refer number 31, I was actually quite impressed with this brush. As I mentioned, I have used the 17 and for a while that was kind of my go-to foundation brush. But since then I have found that the BK Beauty brush is just a little bit softer. This one though today did feel super soft and so it's giving the BK Beauty brush a run for its money. So I will definitely continue trying this out and keep you guys posted. Overall, I was just impressed with how soft it felt on the skin and also how it really didn't leave any streaks at all around my face. In the center of my face, I did have to go in with a smaller brush later for concealer, but I think for all over foundation, this was really nice. I also really loved both of these brushes. Again, I am just very impressed with how beautiful the eye look appears even though it was so easy. Basically, I just, you know, swiped a few times and boom, the eyeshadow was done. So if you are someone who likes one and done looks, I would highly recommend both of these brushes. If you had to pick just one for eyeshadow, I would say that the 33 is maybe a little bit more versatile just because it's a little thinner and has that point. So you can really kind of, you know, put the shadow on in any orientation that you want. You can also build it up and do more of a crease shade versus a lid shade. And then even though it's a little bit fluffy for the lower lash line area, if you're very careful, it does apply a beautiful diffuse layer of shadow on the lower lash line area. 
For the 36, this one was extraordinarily fast as a one and done. I think especially if you like using liquid shadows, this might be a really good brush to check out. I actually do have a couple liquid shadows coming in the mail, so if you guys are interested in that, I have Pat McGrath and Lisa Eldridge coming up, so definitely subscribe if you want to see those videos. But I'm very excited to try this brush with those shadows because I feel like it was just so fast and easy to put this eye look together. Now I do think because this brush is a little chunkier, you're not going to be able to do a super precise look, but definitely great if you just have one shadow. Another area where this really excelled though was in that concealer application. So, so I often find when I apply concealer with a brush, I do sometimes need to go back over it with a finger. But with this brush, that was just not an issue at all because I feel like this brush is very much designed to kind of mimic a finger application. So it was really nice to just use this to kind of tap the product in. But the little point at the top still gives you a little bit more precision than what you would get with just your finger. Next for the refer number 12 brush, I think this is a really nice smudger brush if you like to smudge eyeliner. So compared to my smudger brush from Sonia G, I would say that I like this one a little bit better. The Sonia G one's just a little bit more precise. And so if you really want kind of more of a pointy smudger brush, I would steer you in that direction. But I find that this one, because it's a bit stiffer, is not as comfortable on the eyes. The trade-off, of course, being that because this is less stiff, you do have to work it out for a little bit on your eye area, but it was really comfortable. So normally I wouldn't want to go in with the eyeliner and spend that much time blending it out. With this brush, it didn't feel uncomfortable at all, but I can't say that's an eyeshadow technique I anticipate using a lot just because in general, I just don't really like the whole smudging process. But if you are into that, I think this does a really good job. And rounding out the eye brushes, I am actually quite impressed with this refer number 34 brush. It is so teeny tiny, I really didn't know what to do with this brush. But I have to say, I think it was actually really easy to control and use in terms of applying the shadow on my liner. I didn't get any fallout from that process and I had a lot of nice precision, which is great. Am I gonna be using this brush all the time? Probably not. I think it's sort of a step that is more involved than I would normally go in with. But I do think if you want to do a graphic liner, especially if you have some nice liquid shadows or if you're gonna use a mixing liquid to turn your powders into liquids, this is a really great brush that will give you a lot of precision for that liner. I'm actually curious if this can maybe help me do that kind of inner corner fox eye thing. Hmm. Maybe I'll do that after I take some pictures of this look. Next, we have the refer number 24 brush. This one was okay, I would say, not necessarily my favorite. It did a really good job with buffing out the blush, so I think if you have a blush that can be a little bit too pigmented, then this will do a really good job of really blending that into the skin. Personally, I generally prefer a bit of a fluffier blush brush. And so, so for example, I actually really like the refer number five brush for blush. This one is a little bit bigger and definitely a lot wispier. But I think both of these can have a good place in your collection, just depending on if you like something that's a bit more dense and buffing versus if you like something a bit more wispy and light. My current favorite blush brush is this one from Chikahoto. It's their F03. And you can see this one is a little bit more wispy as well has longer bristles, so it has a little bit more of that movement. But that's definitely a personal preference thing. So if you're more of a buffer when it comes to blush, then this is a good brush to check out. In terms of bronzer, I enjoyed both of these brushes and I was actually quite impressed and surprised with how much I enjoyed the refer number 30 brush because this one is mostly marketed for powder, but I actually prefer this, I think, for bronzer because that sort of sweeping motion that you do when applying bronzer is really well suited for this kind of brush. Because the bristles are so long, when you do that sort of sweeping motion, it just really feels incredibly light and soft on the cheeks. Whereas if you're kind of pouncing powder on your face, it's a little bit less soft. 
The 22 brush is definitely a little bit more precise than the 30, but also a little bit more of that kind of buffing brush. And so for this one, I like using kind of the angle of the brush. You can see it has a little bit of that slope here. So I like putting the powder here and then moving it against the face. I think if you do it that way, it's quite soft and also quite controlled. If I had to pick one of these for bronzer, I would probably pick the 30 because it's just a little bit more unique in my collection. But if you are someone who likes more of that buffing motion, the 22 would be better. And in terms of powder, I think this is a good brush, but not my favorite brush. Again, just because I prefer this for more of that kind of wispy motion, which I guess if I did this really fast with powder, it would probably give that similar effect. But oftentimes with powder, I am more carefully tapping it in place. And with that kind of motion, I'm not a huge fan of this brush. On the whole though, I have to say I am very impressed with all of these brushes. There really were no duds from this bunch, which is saying a lot because these are brushes that I specifically had not yet picked up from Refers Line, despite having almost all of their other brushes. And so I'm really glad that the brand reached out and gave me this opportunity to try out these brushes for you guys, since I do have a really large brush collection and so I try a lot to kind of prioritize which brushes to pick up but these brushes definitely pushed me a little bit out of my comfort zone but in a really good way and I wouldn't be surprised if some of these brushes end up in future favorites so that's it for today's video if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll catch you next time bye